why don't we find human and dinosaur fossils together? That's a common question that young earth creationists face. Probably most every large seminar series they give, they'll be asked that question. In fact, just this past weekend at an ICR event, that question was asked by an audience member, where are all the human fossils and why don't we find any with any dinosaurs? Yes, that has been what some people think is kind of a gotcha question on young earth questions, and they feel it. Uh, they have written a number of different articles and responses and come up with a number of different possible explanations for why human bones or human remains are never found with dinosaur remains. Because remember, in their worldview, dinosaurs and humans are created on the same day, coexisted for 1600 years prior to the flood, were preserved on the flood, right? Both of them preserved on the flood on Noah's Ark, walked off the Ark and lived in this post-flood world together, at least for a short time. The, I don't know, 40 or 50 different kinds of dinosaurs that were preserved on the Ark all would have come off at least as pairs off the Ark, according to Ken Ham's model of young earth creationism, and begin to propagate themselves. Uh, but apparently they all went extinct uh, post-flood. Nonetheless, they lived with human beings for some time. Where are the remains of those dinosaurs that left the Ark only 4,350 years ago? And where are the remains of human beings that were swallowed up by the flood? Some young earth creationists believe that millions, possibly billions of individuals lived prior to the flood. Where are their remains? This remains an enduring question for young earth creationists. And we have a new way of answering that question coming from Calvin Smith, who is Answers in Genesis um, executive director in Canada. So their, their Canada um, arm. And Calvin Smith has authored an article that was just published at Answers in Genesis. We're going to look at his new way of, of answering that particular challenge. And then we're going to try to meet his challenge and explain why don't we find coelacanths and whale fossils together because that's what he does he's going to say that uh, for the same reason we don't find coelacanths and whales together this is the reason we don't find dinosaurs and humans together so this gives me an opportunity for me to show you a paleontological database online in which we can search for fossils and i can show you where those fossils are found in the world over throughout the geological column and we will discuss whether his uh, example um, or retort has any merit. So let's get after that coming up. So here it is, a deal breaker for biblical creation. That's the title of Calvin Smith's article. Why haven't we found humans and dinosaur fossils together? Calvin Smith seems to be taking a, a somewhat broadened role at Answers in Genesis. I mean, he's been executive director of Answers in Genesis in Canada for a while, but now he has a greater presence on YouTube where he does some almost daily videos there uh, on Creation Matters, and he's been writing more frequently on his blog, which is uh, highlighted on the Answers in Genesis webpage. Usually his particular article isn't highlighted uh, on the top of the page, but he does have a, a blog entry um, that you can get to. Uh, and he's posting, again, like I said, fairly regularly, much more than he did so in the past. Uh, Calvin Smith is a very aggressive, uh, well-spoken uh, speaker, but has a very aggressive style. So let's take a look at how he approaches this question. Why don't we find dinosaur and human fossils together if a global flood captured all of them in uh, this chaotic event just 4,350 years ago? After a preamble about dinosaurs being the same thing as dragons, uh, and that and and why are they known as dragons? Because all the dinosaurs survived the flood and therefore were in, interacted with humans to some extent after the flood, and as a result, that's where the dragon legends came from. That actually comes into play a little bit with some things I'll say uh, later on. Um, so it's obvious. The obvious conclusion is that both humans and dinosaurs coexisted before and after the flood. But after the flood, dinosaurs, like many other creatures, gradually went extinct. So the dinosaurs are extinct today, but nonetheless, humans had interactions with them. And as such, that raises the natural question, 
why don't we find dinosaur bones and human bones together? Is this a rock solid argument against the Bible? So what the humans with dinosaur fossils questions is getting at is a simple logic yet somewhat naive assumption that if two different creatures lived together at the same time and coexisted in similar environments, then surely we should find their fossils buried together. All right, you see the, the, the beginning of his logic? He's going to set the stage for the assumption is that if two organisms lived at the same time in the same environment, that we should find their fossils buried together. So what he's going to do is he's going to find two other types of organisms that presumably live together at the same time, the same time in history, but also lived in the same environment. And if we find that we can't find their fossils together either, that gives us reason to pause or reason to believe that it's not surprising that humans and um, uh, dinosaurs aren't found together. It's going to be something of a statistical argument that he's going to make in this particular article. However, I believe the very specific human and dinosaur fossil question is so often posed because the biblical derived conclusion that people and dinosaurs once coexisted has been so loudly and viciously mocked by evolutionists that the whole notion just seems ridiculous. All right, so he's going to you know, talk about just how um, he, he's sort of, again, blaming evolutionists and others for bringing up this question rather than saying that, look, at honest, well-meaning Christians go to these seminars and they have these questions. And I've heard them say that this isn't just coming from the outside world. It's not something that's been forced upon them. I think it's natural that anybody, even without any clue of evolution or knows anything about science, is probably going to ask that question to themselves or of somebody in their church someday. Why don't we find human fossils or dinosaur fossils together and maybe they've heard about like the paluxy tracks uh, trackway and some of these other fake places where human footprints are supposedly be next to dinosaur footprints but even even those places have been um, icr and other young earth creationist um, organizations have admitted are, are not good evidence uh, for dinosaurs and humans coexisting so in a way calvin smith is what he's doing here is he's trying to explain why there isn't any evidence Right? Rather than try to come up with some other evidences uh, and possible evidences of dinosaurs and humans coexisting, which many creationists have done, he's just going to admit there is no evidence all right, for the coexistence of those two via the fossil record. And he's going to come up with an explanation for why we don't find that evidence, even though it is still a true thing that these two things work together. All right, so the devil's in the details. Uh, in fact, I want to show you that conceptually, it's actually quite a powerful argument against the story when you factor in evolution's required millions of years time frame and unpacked it fully. It's not a slam dunk argument that the Bible can't be right because there's no dinosaurs and humans found together. Meet our contestants. So for the sake of argument, we'll use two creatures I mentioned earlier, whales and coelacanths. All right. Already living in an aquatic environment. So they live in a similar environment. Of course, that's a pretty broad thing there, aquatic environment. Um, primarily depict fossils where evolution stories, stories, primarily depict fossilization taking place. In other words, yes, oceanic stuff tends to get fossilized relatively easy compared to a lot of uh, land living organisms versus dinosaurs and humans, which are both specifically land dwelling creatures. So you're saying, all right, it's a little easier to get fossilized in the water column or at the bottom of the ocean or a lake than it is for a land animal to get fossilized. It takes special conditions. Um, and so he's already setting the stage for, hmm, if we can't find fossilization in the ocean of these critters, then how can you really expect to find dinosaurs and humans together when it's even going to be harder to find them fossilized together? All right, let's look at the first two candidates in relationship to the story of evolutionary's timeline as just one example to show you why the human dinosaur fossil question isn't really a challenge to the creation account whatsoever. Coelacanths, living fish once presumed extinct and formerly used as index fossils for the Cretaceous period. In other words, there's a large, there's a lot of coelacanth fossils that are known. Um, and those fossils, as I'm going to show you, because we're going to go to a we're going to go to a database, and I'm going to show you visually uh, this in a moment. Um, but coelacanth fossils are mostly found in the Cretaceous and earlier. Uh, and so, because we didn't know of any recent fossils, it was and nobody had actually seen a coelacanth, 
uh, in real life in the present day. It was thought that they were extinct, all right? So sometimes they're called a, you know, a fossil species. All right, so coelacanths, they were, they were known from the past. Uh, I specifically chose it for our comparison because it's so well known in the creation evolution debate and it is casually referred to as the dinosaur fish by some, right? Yes, coelacanths are, are a well-known example because creationists often point to them as no change has happened in history because look at these coelacanths from 400 or 300 million years ago. They don't look hardly any different than the coelacanths we've just found recently. And so evolution hasn't happened. That's more of what they're known for than what he's going to use them for in this example. Whales, on the other hand, are said to have evolved about 50 million years ago. So rather than 350 million, just 50 million years ago. So that means, according to evolutionists, the whales and coelacanths have supposedly coexisted for approximately 50 million years in the same general aquatic environment. Now, general aquatic matter means the ocean. <laughs> okay, um, But his point is, is that for 50 million years, that's a long time, these two different organisms, two different types of organisms have coexisted. Given they've coexisted for a long time, might you expect that once in a while they should have both preserved very close to each other? Not necessarily right exactly next to each other, but at least in the same layer of sediment in the same general area or location. However, even though they live together now, and presumably did so for throughout the supposed 50 million year old evolutionary timeline, no fossils with whales and coelacanths together have ever been found. Why is that? Hmm. Now, before we proceed, remember details are important. Ah, I'm going to say that too. Details are important. And when I go to the database and we're going to show you some details and tell you some things that Calvin Smith neglects to tell you, in other words, he doesn't tell you all the details in order to form his story. Let's deal with an objection that can be raised here. Some might say that although both these creatures live in the same wide-ranging environment, <laughs> I already indicated, the ocean, right? So I've already started to make this objection. He anticipates that. Why don't both live in the same, both don't live in the same habitats? So the argument doesn't hold water. Hmm, yes. Uh, coelacanths live in deep waters. Uh, the current coelacanths we know of today are adapted to very deep waters and never found in shallow water. Uh, and in, in certain environments around, in fact, they're only known from a, a few, very few locations. However, although today we observe coelacanths living deeper in the oceans, 90 to 700 meters, that's 295 to 2300 feet deep. That's very deep. And most whales spend most of their time near the surface. There is actually a tremendous variety of behavior among the 40 different whale types living today, those that actively regularly cause them to traverse all but the most extreme depths. Snails. It's true, some whales will dive very deep. And so therefore, he can say that whales could, in fact, possibly come in contact with coelacanths because there are some whale species that do. Now, of course, not all whale species do. So that's part of the problem is there's only a few whale species that could ever have really lived or interacted in the same environment. But that's actually going to be a minor detail compared to the other problems we come up with. <clears throat> so whales have been documented uh, diving over 2,900 meters deep, all right, staying there for several hours. And that means they regularly pass through coelacanth territory and overlap their habitats constantly. Cetaceans are ubiquitous in the ocean. They are found in shallow and deep water, cold and warm currents from pole to pole and the tropic latitudes in between. Now, today, uh, this is one other thing I want to read here. Today, coelacanths are largely found near the uh, Comoros Islands in the Western Indian Ocean, and also some live along the East Asian coast into Indonesian waters. According to a wide variety of whales, also frequent these locations, there's no, no reason to believe that these creatures ever had any significant separation over time but still no fossils between them. So this sounds like uh, this could be a, this could be an interesting, it's got potential, right? Um, humans and dinosaurs live together in the same environments, uh, and yet we don't find any fossils between them. But let's just say evolutionists believe that coelacanths and whales also have lived in the same environments, and yet we don't have any fossils of those either. So checkmate, right? Problem solved. 
And he implies, of course, that there's probably lots of other examples like this. And so we shouldn't actually expect to necessarily find human and dinosaur bones together. Okay. Um, let's not read the rest of this. We've got what we need. Now we're going to go to the Paleo database and we're going to check out the fossil record. And then that'll allow me to talk some more about some other features here that we need to consider. When we ask the question, because now I'm going to ask the question, why don't we find coelacanth and whale fossils together? Right? Because that's actually what Calvin Smith's challenge is, right? He's challenging uh, those that don't believe the world is young to answer the question, why don't we find those together? I mean, after all, you've had millions of years of opportunities. Surely there should be a whale and a coelacanth fossil found together. How, how would I react or others react to that? Um, okay. Let's, let's do it. Let's get over to the Paleo database. Okay, here we are. We are at um, Paleo Bio database. Uh, Navigator, this is a really fantastic site. I'll try to remember to put the link to that uh, below this video. Uh, I'm on the landing page. And, but, and so it's just showing you like, hey, there's a lot of fossils. Uh, let's just get started by looking at the coelacanth. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask this very large database of, of, of fossils from the, um, basically from all publications, from re records of, of fossils. Uh, where have fossils been found, both geographically but also time-wise uh, through the geological column? So let's search for coelacanths first. I can remember how to spell this. Coelo, yeah, coelacanthiformes. So that's the order of the large group of all coelacanths. And what you see here is you should see a bunch of dots all over the place. Every one of these dots represents a location where a coelacanth fossil has been identified, recorded, uh, either been written up in a paper or at least as part of a database of like things that were found at this particular location. Uh, and the dots are different colors. And if I scroll over a dot, it actually shows up and down on the bottom is the geological time cable. And you'll see there's it pops up as to where it, it comes from. These are all Triassic and this lighter color is Cretaceous. All right, the green color is Cretaceous. So I can go down to the geological column and I can click on any one of these sections of the geological column and I can say like from the Phanerozoic, which is 252 million years and older, uh, there's still some dots in here, not nearly as many, but those would be the oldest coelacanth fossils. And if I move up into the Mesozoic, the Mesozoic is the time of the dinosaurs, right? It's the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous from 252 million to 66 million years ago. And I see dots all over the place. Actually, let's, let's scroll in. All right, so I'm seeing some, some dots here in Europe, right? So we, we find them all over, right? A number of different locations in all the different continents. And if I were to click on any one of these, I would... Uh, get information about that location and what, what you know where I could find the publication or information about that particular site and uh, maybe what species was found there. All right, so the idea is we've got lots of different coelacanths, but we want to look at where do we find them in the fossil record? Uh, Cretaceous. Great. And then we've come up here to the Cenozoic. Now, when I click on the Cenozoic, the Cenozoic is 66 million years to present. Um, let's look for some dots. All right, I'm scrolling around. All right, we can't look on the bottom of the ocean. We don't have fossil record from there. We have to look on land, right? Looking on land. What do you notice here? I am not seeing any locations where a coelacanth has ever been identified in the last 66 million years. And now you know why it's considered a living fossil. All right, because we've known about coelacanths, a wide variety of many different species of coelacanths, from over a 200 million year range uh, in different rocks of the fossil record, but they're all Phanerozoic, sorry, Paleozoic and uh, Mesozoic rocks. There's none from the Cenozoic. And then, boom, we suddenly find an actual living coelacanth. And the living coelacanths are over here on the coast of Africa. And basically, think of it as like around the Indian Ocean. Right? That's the only place that they have been found. And they're very, very deep in the water. So now we ask this question, why aren't there any fossils from the Cenozoic? 
All right, if coelacanths have, co have continued to exist from 66 million years ago to present, 66 million years of time, and yet we don't have any fossils from them. What are some possible explanations for that? But one is that after the Cretaceous extinction, that a large number, like most of the variety of coelacanths disappeared. Right? There were probably multiple different species living at that time. Could be that many of them were knocked out and there was only a small remnant population. That remnant population may have, from that time, 66 million years to present, been adapted to deep oceans. Maybe it was being living in deep water, right, in a, in a particular cold environment uh, with low energy input and so forth. Maybe all those things are the things that allowed it to survive that big extinction event. And then it's continued to live in that deep water environment since. Ask yourself this. How would a deep water fish become a fossil that's above the ocean for us to find today? The way that happens is, or the way that could happen is, usually you have, if, if you think about like, where do we get whale fossils from? Where do we get lots of other different kinds of oceanic fossils on land? Because that's where we're finding them, right? We're not going down into the ocean, digging into the ground, finding fossils there. We are finding them on land. So if I go back to the Mesozoic, and I look at, where am I finding these fossils? And then you ask yourself, what was that land? What was that place back there at that particular time? It turns out all that rock that it's in is all shallow ocean rock. In other words, it's shallow oceans. They were laid down in a shallow ocean. So other species of coelacanth, in fact, from the fossil record, it appears that most species of coelacanths in the distant past lived in shallow waters. Right? A few of them adapted to living in deeper waters. They're the survivors. They're the ones that continue to exist today, but all the other shallow water ones are gone. Because they lived in shallow waters, we know that there was a shallow ocean that covered up most of the midsection of North America. And if we were to go around and look at other continents, we'd find that all these areas where these dots are are really not that high elevation, and they all represent marine layers. Right? And marine layers can come from one of two things on, on land today. And that can come from either when the oceans were higher and covered portions of the shallow areas or, or low elevation areas of land today. Or, so for example, um, there are lots of marine critters like whale fossils on the, near the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina. Right? The elevation is very low there, and when, when the polar ice caps were more melted, that whole area was in a shallow sea. It was, it was part of the, the, the continental shelf, just like there's a shallow water off of there. And someday what could happen, too, is the ocean could get lower, in which case it would be exposed, and we might find, we'll find fossils there. The other thing that can happen is you can have uplift. You can have large areas that begin through earthquakes and plate tectonics. You can get lifted up. So uh, a continental shelf can get lifted up above the sea. And we see this happening in various places. Uh, and if that happens, any fossils that were laid down in the shallow sea will get raised up and now we'll see them above. All right. Now, that has happened in the last 66 million years. There are a few locations. Um, especially around uh, in, all in California, uh, down the South American coast, uh, a bunch of different islands uh, in various places have experienced uplift in some areas in the Mediterranean Sea. They have experienced uplift and what was in the sea has been raised above the ocean. And so now it's exposed for us and we can collect fossils from formerly oceanic environments. Uh, but there's only a few locations over the last 66 million years. Now, since the Mesozoic, there's been large areas of continents that were either under the water or have been lifted up. And so we have large expanses of, of marine rocks that we are able to look at, including like the bottom of the Grand Canyon, right? Uh, all of that Grand Canyon area is all lifted up. So what about coelacanths now? Right? We haven't even talked about the whales yet. Remember, the whole issue here is why don't we find coelacanths with whales? But let's just stick to coelacanth story for a moment and, build and, and talk about that. So why aren't there any coelacanths from the Cenozoic? Right? Can't know for certain, but it's not an unreasonable uh, assumption or not unreasonable uh, hypothesis that uh, there haven't been many coelacanths. Right? Uh -huh. They've just been small populations and deep dwelling. And if they're deep dwelling, 
They're never going to leave remains in a shallow sea. They're not on continental shelves today. Uh, and so even if a continental shelf gets lifted up, there's not going to be fossils of coelacanths there, right? Possibly once in a while, there could be some way, some individuals, they get trapped on a continental shelf and they get preserved. But then again, you're only talking about maybe a few individuals, in which case the chances of actually finding them, they have to get fossilized, right? Then it has to get uplifted. Then you have to erode it in a certain way, and then you have to find it. It's not shocking at all that no fossils are found of coelacanths from the Cenozoic. We don't have, we do not have any deep water uh, oceanic sediments that are exposed for us to actually look in. So there may well be fossils of coelacanths in the world. They're just not anywhere we can actually find them. Now, what about whales? All right, let's go to whales, uh, cetacea. All right, let's look at all whales. That includes dolphins, porpoises, whales. And we got to get rid of Mesozoic and I got to get rid of the coelacanths. Okay, so now we're looking at throughout all of history, where are whales found? There are a lot of whale fossils. Ah, look at where the whale fossils are found. If whale fossils have been preserved during a global flood in which the flood tore everything up and laid everything down across all the continents, a huge massive amounts of sediment, wouldn't you expect whale fossils to be found basically anywhere? right in, in in any sediment layer that's a flood deposit there are no whales in flood deposits at least according to answers in genesis or calvin smith right he believes that all the sediment laid down by the flood was happened all before we had the very first whale fossil I mean, you're, but you're looking at this map you're saying but what there's a lot of whale fossils there two things to notice one is the pattern notice that like look along the coast of california or north america down the Baja, look at the coast on the eastern coast, and then in Florida. Look in Europe, although it looks like there's a lot all over Europe, a lot of this is very uh, shallow area, uh, and has been shallow area in the past, and as oceanic uh, sediments. Uh, and then you look in, uh, a famous place for fossils is in uh, northern uh, Egypt, and then you have over here in Japan, and a large amount of Japan has been uh, a somewhat uplifted to continental shelf uplift uh, and then Australia and, and then South Africa uh, and all along the coast of, of South America and also that is also area that's experienced uplift from earthquakes right the Andes Mountains all right so there's uplift there too you notice that there's no whale fossils really in the center even though there was uh, at one point a ocean in the center of North America and we have lots of marine layers there None of that marine layer has any whales in it. Now, here's why. Let's focus on what is the color of all these. You notice the color of the dots? The color of the dots are all like pink and yellow. That's Cenozoic. So I'm going to put them. Here's all the Cenozoic fossils. Now, let me go back to the Mesozoic. Boom, they're all gone. There are no whale fossils known from the Mesozoic, from the Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous period. Let's go back to the Paleozoic, from the Cambrian all the way up through the Permian. 500 million years up to 252 million years. There are no whale fossils at all. All right. Now, Calvin Smith admitted this. He said that whale fossils are only known from the last 50 million years. There they are. But what do we say about, uh, what do we say about uh, the, how many, how many, how many fossils of coelacanths have been found in the Cenozoic? I said there are, it looks like this. There are no fossils of coelacanths in the Cenozoic. Where are all the whale fossils found? They're all found in the Cenozoic. All right, so one would not expect to find the two together if they're extremely rare, right? Like coelacanths are extremely rare in the Cenozoic period, right? We don't know of a single fossil of them. So it's not just that, oh, there are, you know, this is what Calvin Smith doesn't say. He says they're never found together. What he doesn't tell you is there are no coelacanth fossils at all. So it's not like, oh, there's a bunch of coelacanth. It's not like I click on this and I'm like, oh, here's all the dots where, this, where the, I can't show you. Here's a bunch of dots where all the uh, coelacanths are found in the Cenozoic. And here's a bunch of dots where all the whales are found in the Cenozoic. And they don't overlap. Now, if that were true, if there were thousands of coelacanths found in the Cenozoic on oceanic shelves uh, or, or um, continental shelves along the, along the, uh, the boundaries of the various uh, continents, 
And then you had whales as well found in those similar locations, but you never found them really very close together. I would find that rather intriguing, right? I'd be like, oh, how could you have that many fossils of both types and not actually find them together, like within 20 feet or 100 feet of each other? How could that never be? It's easy to explain in this case. There are no fossils of coelacanths at all. So there's nothing to overlap with whales. All right. The mystery really is for young earth creationists. Where are the whale fossils? They say that whales existed before the flood. All right. They continued through the flood. They weren't preserved on Noah's Ark. So why didn't they get preserved? I mean, okay, there are sea reptiles before the flood, right? There are sea reptiles before the flood. Plesiosaurs. Plesiosauria. Let's look at the plesiosauria. And let's get rid of the cetaceans. Um, the Cenozoic. There are no plesiosaurs. Those are sea reptiles. It's just like, oh, well, maybe they just don't get preserved really well. Uh, let's go back to the Mesozoic. Well, there they are. And look where they are. They're in the shallow sea that was in the middle of the center of uh, North America. Um, plesiosaurs. If you go back to the Paleozoic and they disappear. They only exist in the Mesozoic. Right. None of them persist into the time after the flood. Um, all right. So, but I guess my point is if plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, which had the same body styles, live in the same habitats that whales did or do, how come whales did not get preserved before the flood or in the flood? But plesiosaurs did. We have thousands of records of them in the fossil record of the flood record. But whales, but not a single one found after the flood. But whales, for some reason, didn't get preserved at all. All right. All right. I think, uh, oh, no, well, we need to do one other thing. Let's look at dinosaurs. Let's say dinosauria. Uh, dinos, dinosauria. That's what I want. And the Cenozoic. Whoops. Sorry. Can't say dinosauria because birds are included in the dinosaurs. All right. So uh, there's lots of bird fossils. So we got to go to dinosaur. Actually, this is going to be hard to do. Mm, unranked clade and the reptilia. I'm trying to think of how we're going to get rid of the birds. Nah, we're not going to be able to get rid of the birds. Uh, okay, I'm just going to have to tell you. Um, you know, here's, here's the Mesozoic. There's a lot of dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, a lot of dinosaur fossils, right? If you go to the back of the Paleozoic, boom, they're all gone. There's none known for 300 million years in any of those rocks. And then there they are. And not only that, if you go to the Triassic, there's a few Triassic dinosaurs, right? Then you go to the Jurassic, and there's a whole bunch of other dinosaur fossils. And then you go to the Cretaceous, there's a whole bunch of other dinosaur fossils. And these are different size, types of dinosaurs in these different uh, eras. And then when you go to the Paleogene, they're all birds, like all the stuff down here. These are all birds, right? There's no dinosaurs uh, like what most people think of as dinosaurs, except that birds are dinosaurs. All right, so Homo sapiens. Um, and scroll in here. So these would be fossilized, right? Homo sapiens, of which there's not a lot. Uh, but there's a bunch down here in Southern Africa. Uh, some in Northern Africa. All right, so we've got a few dots, but let's see what are the, they're in the Cenozoic. You notice there's none in the Mesozoic and none in the Paleozoic. In other words, no human fossils are known from what young earth creationists think is the flood rocks, which are the Paleozoic and Mesozoic. And then we get to the Paleogene. There are none in the Paleogene. Well, this is rock that was supposedly laid down after the flood when people had are dispersing across the world and yet no human fossils are known from that time all right let's let's scroll in let's um, zoom in on the Cenozoic right 66 million years to present and then let's go all the way up here to the Quaternary all right and let's expand the Quaternary all right and the Quaternary is just 2.5 million years to present and there we start there's where we finally see some fossils from human beings all right homo sapiens the point is dinosaurs and humans don't overlap because there's no dinosaur bones found in there's no known dinosaur bones anywhere so you don't expect to find them together if you never find them at all 
in a period, and human bones are never found uh, in the Mesozoic. I just put the coelacanths back up while I talk about uh, some final thoughts here. So what Calvin Smith has done is he has attempted to draw our attention to another exam, another potential problem, a problem for evolutionary biology. Why don't we, or, or the fossil record, why don't we find coelacanths and whales together? I hope what I've shown you is that it's not actually surprising that we don't find whales and uh, coelacanths together. And so I don't think he's picked a very appropriate example. He's picked a, an example that doesn't really make his case, all right? The fact that we don't find coelacanths and whales together doesn't really help explain why humans and dinosaurs aren't found together. If anything, it makes sense why neither one of them are found together because that's the way the geological, that's the evidence we see in the geological column. The other little tidbit here that I would add is that I've never understood, I, I still think it's a really serious question for young earth creationists. Why don't we find dinosaur remains with human remains somewhere? And But I have another reason for thinking this uh, than what Calvin Smith may be thinking. I look at it as humans and dinosaurs interacted with each other after the flood. This is what Calvin Smith says. We just saw it in his article. He said that all the dragon legends all over the world, right, have different dragon legends, and it's because they witnessed dinosaurs. And they then derive these legends from the reality of dinosaurs and their eyewitness accounts. So that means dinosaurs made it out from the ark into a variety of number of places in the world and interacted with human beings. Okay, even if this was just a couple thousand, I wouldn't necessarily expect that a dinosaur dies and their bones get preserved and a human being dies and their bones get preserved together. Right? I wouldn't expect that to happen naturally. That's not shocking to me that we don't find the two together. Uh, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect a young earth creationist to, to be able to show that. But here's what I would expect them to show. I've heard many young earth creationists, including those at Answers in Genesis, which have also tried to answer, aside from Calvin Smith, who have tried to answer this question, why don't we find them together? And one of the reasons they say that uh, dinosaurs aren't found together is because, well, uh, well, they'll explain like humans and dinosaurs weren't really together very much before the flood and humans ran away from the flood and they were capable of climbing up mountains and getting away and therefore they were fossilized last and so highest up even though we don't have any fossils of humans from the flood record uh, but they'll say because they're high up in the fossil record or the the water column they decayed and they never got preserved right. that doesn't make sense to me because uh are you saying that you know this huge wall of water comes by and they had time to run away. I mean, what, there's lots of other organisms that could have also gotten away. So why do we see them trapped in the flood record? And besides that, not every human being can just get up and run with all their might to the top of a mountain. Surely there were elder, elderly people. There were babies. There were people incapacitated. There were also many people that had died before the flood and their remains were in the ground, right? They had been buried or put into caves. And so their bones are present. And they got swept, what did the bones run up to the tops of mountains so they would avoid being trapped in the fossil record? Okay, so that's one problem. But I'm talking about the problem after the flood, interacting with human beings then. I've heard answers in Genesis suggest, especially Bodhi Hoge, suggest that the reason human dinosaurs went extinct after the flood is they were hunted to extinction. What do hunters do? What do universally hunters do when they capture their prey or, or kill their prey, they almost always bring home trophies. Can you imagine the trophies that would come from a dinosaur? The horns, the, the, the stegosaur um, uh, uh, points at the end, the teeth, right? The, you know, there's all kinds of aspects, the claws. Can you imagine not using the claws of a, ra a velociraptor to, uh, uh, in exchange for like your really crude uh, stone tools, why not use a velociraptor to, you know, cut open your meat? Um, there would be so many uses of dinosaur materials, and there would just be playing. You would just collect them because they're cool, right? They're amazing trophies. We have lots of evidence of 
archaic human beings who collected all kinds of stuff from their environment, right? And human beings used mastodon bones, they used mastodon chests, they used all kinds of things as building materials. It would seem incredibly unlikely that humans and dinosaurs interacted, that dinosaurs were killed by humans and they didn't save any of their bones. They didn't save any of their claws. They didn't save any of their horns. They didn't put them to some use. They didn't bury their own people with them, right? There are lots of burials of individuals that are buried with, right? Things that they valued, things that they had, right? Their possessions. How could human beings have interacted with dinosaurs and not kept the remains of some of those dinosaurs with them? So it didn't necessarily get preserved or fossilized in a way uh, randomly. I think that they would have been brought together on purpose. That's what I would expect to see. The fact that we don't find any evidence of humans ever having any piece of a dinosaur is to me one of the biggest challenges to young earth creationists who try to, who attempt to use these types of explanations for the, the, uh, the lack of human dinosaur interaction. Okay, so I think nice try, Calvin Smith. I, when I first started reading, I thought, well, this is this is a clever argument, and I did have to think through a little bit. Like, I need to go look at the fossil record and see, does this really make sense? But as soon as I started looking at it, I already had an inkling because I know what the coelacanth fossil record is and the whale fossil record, but I just wanted to see it um, and explore it a little bit further. Once I really started to think through why those two aren't found together, it's not at all surprising, and so. Calvin Smith is using a bit of a, you know, he, he doesn't provide his audience with all that particular evidence. He doesn't tell his audience that coelacanths aren't actually found overlapping with whale fossils, right, or with the existence of whales. So it's true that because we have modern coelacanths living today and we have evidence of them living 50 million years ago, we assume that there is a continuous lineage from 50 65 million years ago to present. Um, and that means they were available to die and potentially be fossilized. But the extent and the diversity of coelacanths clearly was far less after 66 million years ago, right? When we have so many different fossils, many, many, many different species, different lineages of coelacanths, and then all of a sudden they appear to disappear. All right, that's because not everything gets fossilized. You do have to be in the right uh, conditions for that to happen. And yes, whales potentially could come into contact with coelacanths over 50 million years, but they're coming into contact with them where? In the deep ocean. How do that deep, how does, if even if a whale and a coelacanth died together or near each other and fell to the bottom of the ocean and it's, but it's 500 feet down or a thousand feet below sea level, how do those fossils get raised up so that we can see them today together? Ask yourself, what are the chances of that happening? Extremely limited. Even within a 50 million year time frame, the opportunities for that to happen are so slim, it should not be surprising that we have not found them. All right, my dog's scratching at the door, so I think it's about time to, to wrap this up. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.